Uh, we're going to the Western Conference because Shams, it's time for you to drop some knowledge on us, please. What do you got? So Jay Crowder, he's a guy that still remains without a resolution on his future. He spent some time away from the team throughout training camp, throughout preseason, and the Suns yesterday actually listed him inactive to start the season. I'm told they have still remained in discussions with teams that are interested in Jay Crowder. The, uh, the Atlanta Hawks are one team that has engaged uh, with the Suns, I'm told, in the last several weeks to try to get a deal done for Jay Crowder to bring him in with Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, and John Collins. But uh, no deal has happened. It's going to be interesting to see how the Suns and what the Suns necessarily want for a guy that that started for them, that they envision having a role on this team. They're, they're one, 115 and 39 with him in the lineup in the last two years. This is a big piece that they're going to start the year without tomorrow night. Mm. Those are those are big numbers, Chandler. You played with the guy, and, and as a fan of the game, I I, I want to see him somewhere. What do you make of this story? Yeah, uh, you want Jay Crowder on your team. He's one of those intangible pieces where he can defend, he can knock down shots. He's an awesome dude, uh, and he brings that level of toughness, you know, to your team that not a lot of teams have. And with everything going on with the ownership, with the Suns, now I can see Jay literally not playing until Sarver is forced to sell the team where there's a change in management or something. He's, he's a principal dude. He's tough as nails and he doesn't take shit from anybody. So I can definitely see that being a part of it. Um, I would love to see him in Atlanta. Honestly, he's one, those are one of those young teams that could use a vet in the locker room and on the floor, uh, like a Jay Crowder, but yeah, man, he, he, he's a great dude and, and, and he's a principal guy. So I, I can't see, you can't see him playing in Phoenix, uh, you know, this year until there's a change there. So he's not going to KD the trade request. That's that's yeah. good to know. Here's the problem: he's not going to Durant. So I don't know how much juice he has on the on the trading block. He, you know what I mean? Valuable to your team, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I think he's a great fit on a lot of other teams, but I don't, I don't see him staying in Phoenix. But guys, let's look at like the year that the Suns have had. Game Seriously. seven, you have the Aiton situation, you have the Robert Sarver situation, you have the Jay Crowder situation. They've, I don't know if tumultuous is the right word. I don't even know if this is a rocky, you know, the last few months. I mean, they've, they've gone through it. And so I, it's tough, you know, looking at this team and seeing this being an upward trajectory. I'm, I'm definitely curious Chandler's thoughts. Like if you're a player on that team and you're dealing with one thing after another, the game seven loss, the eight in situation, the, the him coming out saying, I haven't spoken to Monty Williams. Then he says he has, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot, I'm sure for a locker room and a player and especially star players to deal with. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And it seems like, hey, yeah, you can tell DeAndre Aiden, he's a disgruntled employee going to that gym every day. And that's just not good for the community. It's not good for the morale. The dude saying he's not talking to the head coach. Like, clearly he wants smoke. He wants to be – he's pissed at it in the contract. Um, yeah, I, I think Chris Paul is a year older. Um, I think this is a team kind of like Dallas that's going to take a step back. I love their young players, too. I love Cam. I love Mikhail Bridges. Um, but I just don't see them kind of being that force that they've been uh, this, this year. It's crazy see, to me because wondering... all of that drama is self-imposed. Like it's just, it's all in-house. It's all internal. It's things that a lot of it could have been avoided with choices that were done differently. The Sarver thing is obviously it's his own special entity that's, that's gross on a lot of levels, but Eddie, what were you going to say? I was just saying, I was wondering just how much the Aiden thing is going to linger because he can be traded at some point in this year. And, and he also mm -hmm. holds some control over that as well. And yo, when you get benched in a playoff game that you absolutely need to win and you're a starter on your team, and that's bad that for the whole world to see that's bad. And it lingered all summer. It's like, yeah, he got his money and, and he got what he felt he was due, but that has to be something there. And then you, obviously you had the thing with Jay, same thing. And, you, and then Chris Paul, Chris Paul is just, he's a personality <laughs> to deal with. Um, there's a lot there that feels combustible. There's a lot of talent as well. We'll see. We'll see as the season goes on. Shams, could, could Aiden be dealt? Like, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I guess it could be, but could he, do you see it happening? It's just a tough price, right? Like they, they, they made efforts to try to get Kevin Durant when Kevin Durant asked for a trade and Phoenix was obviously a suitor that made sense for him and a, a desired spot for him. But uh, any deal that w had a construct of DeAndre Ayton, um, Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson, the Nets just were not interested in any of those parts in a deal for Kevin Durant from everything I was told. So that's what was, what made the deal difficult. And if this, and if you're the Suns, if you're trying to move a guy like DeAndre Ayton, you want a player like Kevin Durant, you want a, 
Bradley Beal, like a top shelf star player. You're not just going to trade DeAndre Ayton to trade him. So that's the part that makes it difficult. That's the part. It, it's very hard to find value for that. So he, he's going to be trade eligible starting in mid-January. If, if things are not going well this year in Phoenix, if he's continuing possibly to show that this is not a good fit for him, then maybe you look at doing something. It's just right now hard to see a price that matches and makes sense. It's also Guys, I'm going to ask. Oh, sorry. Uh, under a restricted free agent, it's different when you have to go and get a contract from someone else and then have your team match it and then go back into that facility. No one, they could have just Ooh. offered a contract in the beginning. So I think that also has a lot of the frustration with him where, listen, you could have just paid me. I'm one of the best young big centers in the, in the league. Like, and they made him go out and get it. So I think that obviously has a lot to do with it as well. Cause it's different. If they were just gave him that contract, I don't know how pissed off he'd be right now. Still. Uh, I'd be petty no for offer. life. Petty. No, right. and no there was nothing. no there was no offer. He had to shop and, and get one and then have that match. It wasn't like they sat at the table and just were close and not close enough. Mm -mm. There was nothing. And so I can't think of a real world scenario where it's like, yeah, my job doesn't want me, but they were forced <laughs> to take me back. So now we're gonna just make it work. There's there's nothing to compare to that. Petty and we'll see and, and, and we'll see what comes out com, comes comes out of this. But Cam Johnson also was not extended. Um, right. And this is two years in a row where the Suns had a guy that's going to enter a restricted free agency. They they could not reach agreement on a deal uh, based on their offers. And meanwhile, these guys are looking around the league and guys are signing extensions left and right. We are not done. We've got a lot more, including how the San Antonio Spurs could make the playoffs. There's a chance when we come back and run it back. <laughs>